I really miss having that red tripod that I used to have. So I bought myself one of these Joby Gorilla Pods, which are freaking expensive, I must admit. But they have a solid stainless steel pin running th straight through the middle, so there's no chance of the catastrophic failure that I suffered from the plastic camera holder on the top of the previous version. But I don't want to be screwing and unscrewing the Canon off this every time I want to fix it to my tripod and the tripod that you're on as well now is a mini version of this. I'll just show you. So we've got the big Velbon there and then we have like a mini tripod here, which was meant to be a substitute for the flexipod. But unfortunately, this little thing is not as convenient to use on a mobile basis as this one. This is not as convenient as this, and this is a big tripod that stands sort of six foot tall. So, in order to utilize both, I have invested. I have invested in a couple of ball heads. Yes, and I don't mean testicles. I mean Joby ball heads. Now these were quite expensive. Cut towards your thumb, not your chum. These came in, look at the size of the box. I mean, come on Amazon, really. Look at the size of the box. These come in at £34 each, which is a little bit extortionate, I know. It's a little bit expensive, but I did require two. Because these, once I get into it, will allow me to utilise the quick release shoe. on the tripod and replace the quick release shoe on the camera with this. So we have this mounted on the tripod and I can go from tripod to tripod where you're sat now and then also by mounting the secondary ball head which I bought will allow me to go from tripod to flexipod. Perfect combination. Good morning folks, you're precariously balanced on the dashboard of the car while I drive up to the Royal Mail sorting office to pick up a package that was attempted delivery yesterday. Obviously I wasn't in. So we're just gonna shoot up there and then go to the unit I think I need a day's rest because I've sort of broke out in like a little bit of a spot on my lip and one on my forehead. So I should really be considering maybe relaxing this weekend. Hello, stop where you are lad. And uh, maybe not hitting it too hard on the beer. On this birthday party I'm going to tomorrow. We shall see. Anyway, pick up the package, we'll run into the unit. Well, you know me, folks. I like to close the stable door after the horse has well and truly bolted, you might say. So what we picked up from the post office this morning is a puncture repair kit for the car. Have you ever sunk one of these? So I followed a link off somebody who left a comment. Cheers, buds. And uh, this is what you get. So there appears to be some pot of lubricant or sealant or glue of some type. Uh, a cleaner for the hole. I imagine you put that in and give it a bit of the old Tom Watson action there to clean it all out. And then you've got uh, the pipe threader, so or the puncture repair kit threader. So I can only assume that you get one of these dog chews. So that's, oh, they're sticky as well. 
Let's take one out. Oh, very sticky. Yeah, and then you thread the dog chew through here. I'm not going to do it. And then you punch it in, and then there's a slit on the end of this doodly do. And I imagine it just pulls back out and leaves the old dog chew in the hoil. Therefore, creating a seal on the aforementioned puncture. So these seem to have some type of glue on them. So I'll put them back in their little plastic bagage, in the little druggy bag, and fold them up. A couple of Allen keys to tighten up on those bits and bats. But yeah, I'm gonna stick that in the car, along with the tire. We've got a little puncture repair kit. In fact, I can leave it here, I think. Probably more suitable if I leave it here, actually, because there might be a puncture on the van or whatever, so we can repair things. I'll just have to write on it what it is. Right, so I've done a little bit of work on the roof and what have you, and now we're gonna do some work on the top of these tanks. So these are obviously the toggle clamps that we've got to hold the lid on. You can see how they're gonna work in sort of that respect, just clamping these down, but they're a little bit low because of the stiffening ring on top of the tank. So what I've done is taken a little piece of uh, stainless and welded it on to this clamp. The problem being, these are galvanized and uh, it's not a very, well, it's easy to weld them on, but it's not a very clean job. And of course, if these come into contact with any cleaning fluids or caustics, particularly acids, I don't know how they're gonna hold up, but having done that, they look really good. Although they're gonna hold the lid down and they retract as well, clear of the lid. They retract all the way to where the front edge of the fitting actually is. So even if I have to wind these out to give them a little bit more pressure on the top of the tank, the fact that it's wound out allows the top bit to go even further back. And there, you can see that then is lifting the fitting now, so it's making contact. Uh, four of these, if I need more, I can add more. And then across the center of the whole tank here, I'm gonna put a piece of angle, like a crucifix, uh, just to give some strength and stiffen, stiffening. Is that right? Just to give some strength and rigidity to the to the lid, so it doesn't flop in and out when we're taking it on and off. Of course, I've got to try and not warp the lid while I put that on. But we'll weld a few of these up, and then we'll weld them on, and we'll give it a whirl, see if it works. <laughs> After several hours of welding, manipulating and tweaking the lid 
for the HLT, I've come to the conclusion that it ain't gonna work, the plan that I've got. So I put this sort of odd looking pattern on the top to try and keep the lid as flat as possible. But as you can see from the side profile, it failed miserably. And even though that it's clamped down, there is distortion all the way around, probably from putting heat into it from the welder. So I think, yeah, I mean, look at that. Whoop. Just how do you get that out now? So I think what I'm gonna do, instead of wasting money on more steel and probably cocking that up as well, I'm gonna order some 10 mil thick Perspex and we will have Perspex lids on the fermenters at least. Maybe not the boil kettle because of the heat, but I know that the Perspex, I think it was Perspex or polycarbonate, I'll double check what I ordered last time, but I had them on the five barrel fermenters and they stood up to caustic and acid, didn't etch, didn't change colour or anything like that. So I think they're going to be a good uh, substitute for lids for the top of the fermenters and I know for sure that they're going to remain, they're going to remain flat. We've had somebody come and steal me away. I've come to take him away, I've come to take him for a beer. You've got the wrong colour coat on if you're taking me away. <laughs> Should be a white one, shouldn't it? No, I, you have the white wraparound jacket on, not me. So we're just nipping up for one beer. One beer is one all. Beer you, one beer. That's it, and uh, <laughs> the, uh, you know, it's still uh, Dominic, you, uh, I can't, I have to <laughs> put something to drive on, but it, that would be a really nice idea. It would. <laughs> so chances are, we'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>